In today's video, we're going to be talking about testing network cables on a budget. If you've ever installed network cables before, either in a building or you've made up patch leads, you've almost certainly used a little tester like this. These are very inexpensive, they cost well under £10, sort of £5 to £10, and they kind of do the job just to sort of show the continuity of the conductors in the cable to show that all the wires are connected in the right order. But these things suck. They do their basic job of checking continuity absolutely fine, but as soon as you have a problem, be it a crossed wire or a bad connection, they get do absolutely nothing to help you trace down that problem or find the fault. A couple of years ago, I took a look at this CCTV tester from AliExpress. And this is a great little device. What you can do is it's designed for testing CCTV cameras, so you can plug cameras in either over BNC or HDMI VGA, or you can connect it to a network and connect IP cameras. But this also has really good cable testing functionality for testing network cables. That video was very popular, but this device, while it's great, is quite expensive. It costs around about 180 to just over 200 pounds. So if you don't need all the functionality in this, but you want something better than this, where'd you go? So I thought I would set out and try and find the best option I could find for a budget network cable tester that is much more functionality than this, similar functionality to this in fact, but costs significantly less. And essentially almost what I would regard as the bare minimum of a network cable tester if you're doing any kind of reasonable size installs. And I came across this. So this is the Noyafa brand NF8209S. And this costs on AliExpress round about 30 to 40 pounds and from Amazon just over 60. So you pay a premium to get it on Amazon but you'll get it quicker or on AliExpress you can get this for well under 40 pounds. It's a relatively inexpensive device. It's much closer to the price of something like this than something like this much more expensive CCTV tester but it actually has a lot of the functionality that makes this really good at testing cables for a lot cheaper. So what we'll do is we'll get these out of the way, we'll take a look at the tester, take a look at what it does, I've then got a test rig set up where we can simulate some faults and we'll try testing with both this tester and the basic tester to show why this is well worth its additional cost over something like this. Because realistically you're probably paying maybe 20 or 30 pounds more for the better tester but I can almost guarantee you that in any sort of complicated install where you're doing a reasonable number of cable runs, this will absolutely pay for itself and save time very, very quickly. So let's take a look at it. So what we'll do is we'll take it out of the box, take a look at the hardware, and then we'll try it out. So got this box here. Now the brand Nofaya do a lot of different network cable testers. They do lower end ones, they do higher end ones, they do ones that are actually very similar to this almost. So it's a very, very wide range, so you kind of need to compare the features. But this is kind of the one that has all the features I would need at the lowest cost possible. So it comes in this little case. It's a fairly cheap device. You're not getting this sort of the highest end test in the world here, but it's fine. So you get an instruction manual here with a little mouse that says, your excellent helper in cable test. Decent instructions. The instructions are actually quite decent. They do kind of cover all the features and how it all works, so they're pretty decent. And then you get the tester itself. So the tester comes in two different parts. You get the tester itself here and then you get the remote wand type end because this has built-in cable tracing functionality so it can do con sort of no contact cable tracing so this will send a tone down a cable you can tap this on different cables and it'll identify the cables having the tone sent down it they do also do cheaper ones that are maybe a little bit cheaper that just don't have this and have all the other functionality the same but the additional cable toner is actually quite a useful feature to have but if you don't need that you can get a cheaper kit that just has a basic end closer to sort of the idea of this tester for the remote end rather than this big wand but the remote cable testing wand is actually really useful. You also get a bunch of different cables in the box so you get a RG45 to RG45 cable and an RG11 to RG11 cable so it's nice you get these included you would just these are sort of things you could use if you say you need to connect this into say a face plate on a wall you get the cables included. You probably need more cables than this realistically if you say wanting to test two ends of a network run you're going to need two cables like two RG45 to RG45 cables, but you get a couple of cables in the box if you need them. You also get this RG11 to two crocodile clip cable. This is useful if you really want to use the toner function to scan for cables, but you don't want to use it with a sort of standard Cat5 cable. You could, for example, just clip this onto a bare wire of any type and use the toner to find it, so that's quite nice to have there. You get a set of headphones, that's because this does make an annoying beeping noise when you're testing for cables, so you could plug a headphone, set of headphones into this so you don't make the annoying beeping noise, and then a USB-C to USB-A cable to charge it all. So that's the accessories you get in the box there. Nothing that complicated, but it's nice to get a fair few little accessories. Now let's take a look at the tester itself. So obviously it comes in two parts. You've got the main tester and the remote wand. So if we take a look at the tester itself, 
you can see we've got a screen on the front, it's a dot matrix LCD, so buttons here, and then around the side here you've got a bunch of different ports. And that's something to bear in mind with these sort of lower end cheaper testers, is you do have to swap between different ports depending on what test you're doing. So if you're doing a continuity test, you use this port here. If you're doing a scan, so you're doing the sort of no contact toning scan, you connect either to here for RG45 or here for RG11. And if you're doing other tests, for example, measuring cable length or things like that, or PoE testing, you connect to this port here. So you do kind of need to swap between the ports, but that's absolutely fine. The final port on this is a USB-C port for charging. It is nice to get USB-C for charging. You don't need to try and find an old micro USB cable, but there is a flaw with this. It's important to bear in mind. And I've seen this before in other devices, such as my HIC micro thermal camera. Back in the day of micro USB, before USB-C, USB was just five volts. So all USB chargers just outputted five volts and that just worked. But now with USB-C, chargers that support things like power delivery can output all sorts of different voltages. And the device you're connecting to the charger needs to tell the charger what voltage to output. And it does, it does this by putting some resistors in line with the USB-C port. Unfortunately, this device doesn't have those resistors. So if you connect it to a USB-C charger using a USB-C to USB-C cable, it won't actually work. Now, if you use a USB-C to A cable, it'll work completely fine because the USB-A ports will always be outputting 5 volts. And likewise, a workaround I found if you do want to connect this to a USB-C charger is to use a USB-C to A cable and then put a USB-A to C adapter on the USB-A end and that way you'll always get the 5 volts. But it's just something to bear in mind because when I first got this and plugged it into a USB-C charger I have sitting at my desk and it didn't charge, I thought it was broken until I tried it with a USB-C to A cable and it worked fine. So just important to bear that in mind. It does have USB-C for charging, but it doesn't do the pro proper power, power delivery signaling. So you will need to connect it to some sort of USB port that will always output five volts and not a regular USB-C port. It's a little bit annoying. I suspect what they've done is they've done the classic thing of going, oh, USB-C is modern now, quick, swap the connector out, but not actually change anything else about the device. So yeah, just something to bear in mind there. But that's the hardware and the tester itself there. And you've got the remote wand. So this is the remote wand you can use for remote cable testing. So this will send a tone down the cable, you tap this on the cables and it'll find it. So you've got a bunch of different options here. Sensitivity dial, some LEDs that show the signal strength, the sort of antenna on the end that you can tap on the cables. And then down on the bottom, you have an RG45 connector. And this is what you use with continuity tests. So if you want to test the continuity of a cable between this tester here and this, you plug this into one end of the cable, this into the other end, and the tester will tell you the continuity. So yeah, that's a very quick tour of the hardware. Other thing to bear in mind with this model is it has a built-in rechargeable battery in both of these. That's a good thing and a bad thing, I suppose. It's good in the sense you don't need to worry about changing batteries, you can charge it up and it should last a very long time on the battery. The only downside with that is that you do kind of need to remember to keep it charged and if this was to fail in the future, the internal battery was to fail, you might have more of a problem than if you, this used, say, double A's, you can easily swap them out. If you do want something with replaceable batteries, the older NF8209, the non-S model, that does have replaceable batteries, so you could go for that instead if you'd want, want to have normal replaceable batteries rather than this model that has rechargeable ones. So now, let's test this all out. So what I've done is I've made up this test rig here. Don't judge all the cabling here, it's very temporary, and I've deliberately done it with like lots of slack so I can easily swap wires around tests. So this is obviously not how I would normally terminate network cables. But what we have here is this two, there's two gang face plates in the front, which is almost acting like a patch panel, and then these two keystones jacks at the end which are almost like what network ports you'd have in different rooms. So this port here on the, pad, on the middle connector comes out down a big long Cat5 cable and comes back to this keystone jack. And this connector on the left here goes back down the cable again and comes to this keystone jack. And there's probably about 18 or 19 metres of cable between the middle and each of the end keystone jacks. So there's about 30 plus metres in total, about 40 metres almost in total of cable here. There's a massive bundle sitting off camera. So what we can do with this is we can test out the tester on it and we can also disconnect wires, swap them around, and simulate different faults, and see how the tester identifies them. So first of all, let's try out the cheap little network tester, the standard tester, and see what it does. Just sort of remind you of what this does if you've not seen one of these before. So all we do is we'll plug one end of this into the patch panel here, plug the other end into the keystone jack, there. These two pieces can be separated if you want to put them in different locations, they do come apart. And then all you do is you'll just turn it on, and the lights will start blinking. So as you can see, the lights blink there and they count down in order. And because all the LEDs have lit up in the same order on both sides, we know that that's a good connection and it's worked absolutely fine. But this is straight away one of the downsides of these. It's just you have to wait. And it sounds really impatient, but you have to sit there and go one, two, three, four, five, and count through them all. 
And if you're doing one run, that's absolutely fine. But if you're testing a patch panel of 24 runs, potentially way more than that, it really adds up having to just sit and wait for all these tests to run. So let's take a look at the new tester. So we'll disconnect this one, take the new one, turn it on. So holding that button in the front, it powers up pretty quickly. And this is actually quite a nice benefit I find over this higher end CCTV tester is that this device here runs Android. So while it was great and it's got a lot of functionality, it does take a good minute or two to boot up. Whereas this on the other hand, straight away, a couple of seconds and it's on, which is really, really good. So the first test we want to do is similar to this. We want to do a continuity test. So all we do is we have it set to continuity on the screen there. I'm going to plug one of our cables into this QC slash cont port. So it's the cont continuity port. So we're going to plug that into there like that. Then we're going to plug the remote end into the other end there. And then get this up, go into continuity. It'll say press OK to test, press OK. Straight away we've got the test result. So none of this sort of waiting around and waiting for numbers to count. Straight away it just shows all the numbers there are all connected. So we see it's connected straight through. That's worked completely fine. And of course that's not all the functionality this has. So of course that's just a basic continuity test. We'll take a look at some other faults you can potentially have here later. But there's much more than that. For example, we have a length option. And this is a feature that is super useful and has been invaluable on my higher end CCTV tester. The way this works is you disconnect the remote end, you don't leave anything connected to the remote end. You then plug into the top port here, so the port that says length. So the ports are all labelled as to which tests they're for. And then you go into length. Now on here it gives the option to pick between cat5 and cat6. I've changed both of these, I have not seen any difference to length, difference to length measurement, so I don't know if that actually does anything. But what you now need to do is go down to start test. This is where it's a little bit weird, this navigation, because on the main menu here, you're going to go left and right using the buttons that say left and right. But when you come into length here, you now need to go up and down. So you'll kind of naturally want to press down and you'll, you'll press that, but you're actually pressing escape. So what you need to do is go into length and you still want to use left and right buttons, but now they go up and down. Just a little bit of a weird thing there, but once you get used to that, it's absolutely fine. So we're going to press start test. And what that'll do is that'll measure this length of this network cable. There we go, 20 meters. And that's about right. What we can also do is we can try making this cable even longer. So what I'll do is I'll go out of that, I'll plug this into this end here, and what I'll then do is I'm going to put a patch lead between the two ports on the patch panel in the middle. So what I'm now doing is I'm connecting an, ad an additional length of around about 20 meters of cable onto the end of this. So this is now going to be a much longer run. So now if we run the test again, we now see we're getting 37.5 meters. So as you can see, we are actually able to measure the full length of these cables. Now in terms of accuracy, it's definitely not perfect. If you look in the manual here, it's kind of got the tolerances explained. So it's saying on lengths below 20 meters, it's plus or minus 1.6 meters. Between 20 and 100 meters, it's plus or minus 2.4 meters. And beyond 100 meters, it's three, plus or minus 3.2 meters. So it's definitely not perfect. And also it only works a minimum of two and a half meters. If you've got a cable shorter than that, it won't measure it reliably. So you're not going to get an absolutely perfect measurement here, but this is still super useful because it means you can identify where a fault is, if it's in the middle of the cable, if it's at either end, or if you've got a cable run. Say, for example, you're you've are you got a run that's fairly long and you want to run something like 10 gig over it, but it's CAT6, or something like HD base T video distribution. With both of those, you've got slightly tighter cable lengths. I think with CAT6, 10 gig, you're looking at about 35 meters. And then with HD base T video distribution, the higher end systems can do about 70 meters but HD base T Lite, which is a cheaper, cheaper option, is only about 35 meters. With this, you can very easily measure a run just to get a rough idea of where it is. So maybe not going to be super accurate, but if you're trying to just determine, are we talking beyond 35 meters or under 35 meters, it's good enough to kind of tell you that. So it is actually really useful having this feature. And we'll take a look at this where this really comes into its own soon. The next test we have is scan. So this is where you can tone out different cables. So we'll take a look at that. So what we'll do is we'll swap the connector here over to the scan port on the top, like that. And we're going to go in and press scan. And now it says digital mode. So this is now outputting a signal into this cable here. What I'll do is I'll swap it over into one of these ports on the patch panel in the middle. And then what we can do is use this end here to determine which cable this is connected to. So of course we know which these are connected to, but imagine you don't know whether this, is, this port goes to this end or this end. Well with this, you can check that. So all you do is you turn it on, it beeps, and now this knob here adjusts the sensitivity. So as you can see, if I bring it closer to a cable, it starts making a ringing noise. 
if I bring it over to this cable, it doesn't. So now straight away I can go, yep, nope, I've identified that it's connected to that cable there. Likewise, if I swap this over to the other end, I mean, check this one, no signal, check this one, and we've got a signal. It works really well. Now, of course, if you turn the sensitivity up too high, you'll then find it'll start detecting on both of them, just because there's a big bundle of cables hanging off the side of the camera, and the cables are kind of all tangled together, so the signal will kind of be being imparted on each, all the different cables. So you do need to be quite careful, careful with sensitivity, just dial it down low enough so it only triggers on one of the cables and not the other one. But once you do that, it works pretty well. This is also doing a digital test. There's two different modes. So with digital, it, this kind of beeps or it doesn't beep. So you move it there and it sort of, it, it'll start beeping very, very loudly at the same volume. You move it away and it stops. And this readout here kind of shows a sort of rough signal strength. So you see it's gone up to high there. What you can also do is switch it to analog mode. So if you press enter here, it says analog mode. And then on this, you press scan and scan will start flashing. Like that there. Now this is looking for an analog signal. So when you do this, if you bring it closer, you'll hear the signal will start to sort of slowly get louder. So as you get closer, you can maybe hear that. The signal gets louder as you get closer. So I find that that's maybe a little bit easier, especially if you've got a lot of crosstalk and all the cables are kind of producing some sort of signal. You can use this to see where actually the really strong signal is versus a really weak signal. So that's kind of that analog versus digital option. And that's how that works. The next bit of functionality this has is power over ethernet testing. So if I unplug this here, we'll take a look at that. So what we can do is we go into PoE and it'll start checking all different wires for PoE. And if we plug in this cable, it's connected to a PoE switch into the top there. Straight away, it'll detect that PoE. So it says it's PoE, it's on all four pairs. It's 802.3 AF PoE and there's a the voltage. So I can straight away check that there's PoE present and check what standard it is. The other really good thing this will do is it'll detect all sorts of standards of PoE. So that's obviously a standards compliant PoE switch. But here we have a little PoE injector. And this is one of those old Unify PoE injectors that were 24 volts. This wasn't standards compliant PoE. It was Unify's kind of proprietary PoE that you used for a while. So what we can do is we plug into the PoE port on this and plug that end into the tester. Give it a couple of seconds. It'll straight away detect that it's non-standard It'll say it's mid-span, which means it's being done through an injector, not a switch. That would be a switch would be referred to as end-span, and it's reading as 24 volts. So that straight away lets me see that this is a non-standard PoE connection, and I shouldn't try and use it with a normal standard PoE device. So the PoE testing is also really, really useful. Other options here you have are flash. I won't bother demonstrating this. Essentially, all it does is it brings up a network link and drops it, brings up a network link and drops it, and just repeatedly does that. So the idea is if you've got this plugged into a switch, you'll be able to see which switch port it's connected to by looking for the switch port that's got a, a light that's blinking, basically. It does work pretty well, but I've never really found that to work that well in practice on any kind of tester, so I've never really used the port flashing. I find some switches take so long to get a link, by the time it's sort of dropped, it's got its link, it's, or this has already turned it off again. But you do have a flash option if you want it. The final option this has is QC, which stands for quality control. And this is super useful for crimping RG45 connectors onto cables. Because if you've ever tried to crimp a connector onto, onto a cable, you'll know it's a little bit of a fiddly process and quite often you'll get it so it crimps and one of the wires isn't connected properly. What this lets you do is very quickly test a crimp without having to put both ends on the cable and test with the other remote end. All you can do, as you can see, it shows all the connections there aren't connected, they've all got a little cross next to them. But if I plug into this QC port here, Straight away, you see the all tech. So the, all these wires are connected correctly in this cable. So if you're crimping RG45 connectors, you can literally crimp one end, plug it in there. If they all light up, you know it's connected correctly. As an example to test a sort of faulty cable, I've got this cable here. So this isn't actually an RG45 Ethernet cable. This is actually a sort of serial converter, a serial to USB cable. So in this connector here, there's only actually three wires connected. So if we plug this into here, straight away you can see that only three of the wires light up. So if you were to say crimp a connector and you only got three of the wires connected and the other ones weren't connected properly because it was a bad crimp, you'd literally plug it in there and straight away it would show you, which is super useful. Because I'm thinking of an example when I did my parents' network install. I was installing cameras outside and there was a massive storm coming in. So I just wanted to get the cameras on the walls, get all the connectors crimped outside, plug them into the cameras 
and then deal with the patch panel inside once the storm was worse outside, get all the outside stuff done first. Now if all I had was a basic tester like this, I'd have had to put the connectors on the outside and either not be able to test them, or I'd have to terminate the inside as well before I could do a continuity test to check the outside connectors were done. Whereas with a device like this, I could crimp the connectors outside, plug them in like that, just get a basic check, just check the continuity is about right and the connector is crimped properly, then I could safely install the cameras on the wall, screw them all back, and then go inside and worry about the internal patch panel. This is really useful if you just want to be able to test your crimps, so that's a really, really neat feature. Beyond that, there's a settings menu, just like you change things like the backlight and stuff like that, so nothing that important there. So that's a kind of summary of all the features this has, but now let's talk about where this really comes into its own, where you have a fault and you want to try and locate it. So to test this out, what I've done is I've introduced a fault into my test rig here. So as before, we've got this to all the different connectors, but what I've also done is I've put this link in here. So what we now essentially have is a direct connection from this port here to this port here, and this port area here allows us to introduce faults in the middle of the cable, which we'll do later on. So first of all, let's try it with a cheap tester and see what you would get. So all we'll do is we'll just plug in one end into this port here. So imagine this is in one location, then in your other room, you're gonna plug that end into there, and that end into there. So with that all plugged in, let's turn the tester on and see what happens. So I'm just gonna count down its numbers. So one, two, three, and as you can see, wire two wasn't connected. So we wait for it to come back around again. Wire two isn't connected. But this is where we have a problem. Because with this setup here, where is that problem? Is it on this end? Is it on this end? Is it somewhere in this junction box here? Or is it a break somewhere in one of the cables? With a tester like this, you have absolutely no idea. And the amount of times I've ended up going back up into attics and re-terminating network jacks, and then that's not fixed, and taking another faceplate off, re-terminated that, and that's not fixed it, and then it's turned out it was a bad a break right in the middle of the cable. With these testers, you can spend so much time trying to chase down a fault, and it just takes so much longer. Whereas this tester has a solution for that. So if we take this tester and we just do a continuity test as before, so plug into continuity there, plug into the remote end here, and just do a continuity test, you'll see it gives us essentially the same result as the basic tester. It just says that wire two is disconnected. So not particularly useful there. But we now have the length feature. So what we can do with this, we can disconnect the remote end. We'll leave it plugged in here. And now we'll do a length test. So we'll plug that into there, go along to length, press OK, go down to start test and press, OK, press enter. And let's see what it gives us. So as you can see there, it's now saying that all the individual pairs are 37, 37 and a half meters long, so they're all the same length. So that indicates that the fault isn't at this end because all the wires from this end run their full length. So now let's swap over to the other end and see what happens. So we plug this into here, go back out, do another length test, see what happens. And there you go, straight away we can see that pairs one and two, because obviously number two is the one that was disconnected, has a length of zero meters, and the other pairs are all fine. So that straight away tells you that the fault is at this end of the cable, and not the other end. So let that run again, don't know why I'm doing a second test, we already saw the result, but yep, one and two are zero meters. And sure enough, if you look at this connector here, we can see that the orange wire is disconnected. So that's worked. So now if I was to punch this all back down again, we'll be able to fix that fault, so we'll punch it down like that, that's fine. And now if you plug this back in to there like that, go back out, go back in again, run a test again, let that test finish. And as you can see, it's now got the full length again on pairs one and two. So that's how easy it is to locate a fault and test it with this. And likewise, similar to that QC option, you can also use this lens test to check that a jack is connected correctly without having to put a device on the other end. And that can also be a massive time saver. Because say you're terminating a patch panel and you just want to check that every connection is done correctly. If you're using a tester like this, you have to put the remote end on. And that can sometimes involve running around a building upstairs into attics through different rooms just to put this remote end on and swap it to the next jack. And if you're doing it yourself, it can take so much longer. Whereas with this, sure you're not doing a full continuity test, but you can quickly plug this into each port on a patch panel, do a length test, and just get a quick first check to check that all the wires are connected. So that's also really useful. You can kind of just check from one end. But yep, that's how you can locate a fault. So now let's give it another challenge. So I've now introduced a different fault here. So now if we plug it in, do another test again, so we'll do another continuity test again to start with, because that's kind of the 
a good way to do a quick basic test. So we'll plug that end into there, that end into there, go out, go into continuity and run a test. Run a continuity test. And this time we can see that wire six was broken. So that's now disconnected. So let's try and trace it again. So what we'll do this time is we'll do exactly the same again. We'll disconnect the remote end and just do a length test. So we'll go into there, do length, start test. Wait for that to finish. And as you can see this time, we have 37 meters, 37 meters, but wires three and six are only 18 meters. And then if we take this out of here, go out of that, and then we try and check the other end. We'll see that once again, wires three and six are 18 meters. So with that test, it indicates that the fault isn't on either end of the cable, the fault is somewhere in the middle. Now on this test, it is actually I've just disconnected a wire at the internal junction. But if you were to do this and it was just a straight cable run and you saw that sort of behavior, that would indicate that you've got a break somewhere in the middle of your cable. And you can re-terminate your jacks as much as you want. You're not gonna be able to fix that. And once again, I had a situation like that in practice. I was doing a network install, kept re-terminating both ends of a cable, could not get it to connect right. I thought it was a dodgy connector I was trying to use. I just couldn't get it to work properly. I was blaming the connector. Then I finally took out the tester, this tester here, did a length test, and sure enough, the break was about two meters down the cable, which lined up perfectly with a nail hole in the wall. So yeah, that test feature is so useful to be able to identify where a fault is. So now as a final test, I've messed up some of the wires here. Essentially it's simulating if you're terminating a jack quickly and you get some of the wires mixed up. Now if you use the simple cheap tester here, look what happens. It does show the problem. You can see that as it's counting down, the number here shows what it's connected to on the other end. But if you're trying to visualize this, it's not exactly easy. You're kind of looking at this going right. So what we have, two, one, six, four, and it's just not very easy to visualize. Now you can put it onto slow mode and watch it do it even more painstakingly slowly. But this just isn't that easy to visualize what you've done wrong when you've got all these numbers just showing one at a time. Whereas once again, if you use the better tester, we can take a look at this. So we'll plug back into QC slash continuity, go to this, we can plug into the RG45 end there, do a continuity test, and straight away we can see exactly what I've done wrong. Wires one and two are crossed, and wires three and six are crossed. So that straight away shows what you've done wrong, which is really, really useful. Just gives that a bit more of a visualization than a tester like this. Now, this is where there's a slight downside of a tester like this over this higher end one, is that this higher end one, well, first of all, it will show you colors, so it actually shows the colors of the individual wires to the B standard. So if you're wiring using the A standard, this won't really work. But given I always use the B standard, it is quite nice with this. It would show that it was the orange pair that was wrong. With this, you only get the numbers, but equally, it wouldn't be too hard to either remember the numbers or stick a sticker on the back, mapping the numbers to their colors or something. So I might end up doing something like that. The only other feature this kind of lacks that I do quite like about this one is where this kind of describes the type of cable it is. So for example, if you've got a crossover cable and you connect it to this, it will actually say the words crossover. With this, it won't actually show, say the word crossover. So if I grab a crossover cable and try it, so we'll plug this cable, which is a crossover cable, plug one end into there, one end into here like that, and then run a test. It will show a crossover cable, but it doesn't say the word crossover. It just sort of shows this mess of wires. So you can check that out and you'll see it is a normal crossover cable. But that's the one thing this tester does do a little bit better is this will actually say the word crossover so you can see if it's a crossover cable. Whereas this, you kind of have to look at that and go, is it a crossover cable or is it just really badly mis miswired? So yeah, just something to bear in mind there. And then the final thing to mention about the continuity test is it does also test for shielded cables. So here I have a shielded cable. And if we plug that into there and into the other end here, do a continuity test, it will also test the ground. So it's the exact same thing you see before, but it's got this additional line on the end for G, which is the ground. So it will also test the ground continuity through its shielded cables. So that's also really useful to have. So there you go. That's a look at this relatively inexpensive little network cable tester. And I really like this little thing. Even though I've got, I actually have the much more expensive, fancier tester, this thing's absolutely brilliant. And I can see myself using this quite, quite often. In fact, probably more often than this one now, just because it's so much more portable, faster to start up with better battery life. And it does almost all the same tests. And I would definitely say if you're doing any kind of real network installs beyond just one cable a year or something, don't go buy one of these little things, get something like this, maybe cost about 20 pounds more. But once you've had one, even just one cable fault, the time this will save you trying to track that down over one of these will instantly pay for it. So yeah, these things are absolutely brilliant. So yeah, I just thought I'd take a look at that because I really wanted to try something that was a bit more inexpensive and accessible to more people. 
So if you found that interesting, if you're interested in buying this, I've put links in the description and in a pinned comment. I put one to both AliExpress where it is a lot cheaper and also one to Amazon where it's a bit more expensive but if you need it quicker, Amazon do have it. But all I have to say now is thank you very much for watching.